In this video, I will provide a quick explanation of Hall's marriage theorem in graph theory. So let's start with a quick definition. Hall's marriage theorem says, let G be a bipartite graph with sets A and B. Then G has a matching of A if and only if the cardinality of the neighborhood of S is greater than or equal to the cardinality of S for all sets S that are subsets of set A. So that definition is a mouthful and there's a lot of jargon there, but I'm going to show you two quick examples to really illustrate what Hall's marriage theorem is saying. So let's consider the following scenario. Four individuals submit their preferences for movies they would like to watch. Is it possible for each individual to be, quote, matched to a different movie? So we have four individuals here. Let's call them A, B, C, and D. And there are five different movies that they can submit their preferences on for what they would like to watch. So for example, Individual A says they're willing to watch movie one or movie two. That's their preference. They would watch either of those movies. Individual B says they would watch movie two or movie three. Now, individual C says they're only willing to watch movie two. And lastly, individual D says they would watch movie three, four, or five. So in this scenario, we're saying, is it possible to match each individual to a different movie? Well, let's consider the following scenario. For individual C, they said they're only willing to watch movie two. So let's just start there. Let's say individual C, you can be matched with movie two. From there, we could say, okay, individual A, you could be matched with movie one. So we'll draw a line there. Individual B could then be matched with movie three. And individual D could then be matched with movie four or five. So let's just say four for this example. What we've just done is we've found a matching between the individuals and the movies such that each individual gets to watch a different movie. Now, that was an informal way of just saying, okay, let's see if we can find a matching between these two sets of vertices. What Hall's marriage theorem says is that this scenario is really a graph, and more specifically, it's a bipartite graph, meaning there are two sets of vertices right here in which the edges of the graph each edge has an endpoint in one vertex and the other endpoint in the other vertex. So really this is a bipartite graph. And what Hall's marriage theorem says is that there must exist a matching if for every subset of the vertices in this set right here, if we call it set A, if the cardinality of the neighborhood of every subset is greater than or equal to the cardinality of the subset. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's say that we pick a subset of these vertices. So let's say we just pick vertex A and B. Let's let set S be A and B. So this is just a subset of the total possible vertices right here in set A. The cardinality of that set, that's just the number of vertices in the set. So there's two. So the cardinality of the set is two. Now, the neighborhood of set S, that is the set of all vertices that are adjacent to at least one vertex in this set. So if we consider vertex A, for example, we can see that it is adjacent to vertex 1 over here, and it's adjacent to vertex 2. In other words, it has an edge connecting them to those vertices. So for the neighborhood of S, we would say that the vertices that are adjacent are vertex 1 and vertex 2, but then we also have to consider what vertices are adjacent to vertex B. So vertex B is adjacent to vertex 2 and vertex 3. So 2 and 3. So since we already have 2 written down, we don't have to write that down again. But we can add vertex 3 to this set. Now what we'll find is that the cardinality of the neighborhood of S, that's just the number of vertices in this set right here, which there are three total vertices. So the cardinality of the neighborhood is 3. So what we'll find is that this condition is true for this particular subset we chose. The cardinality of the neighborhood of S, which is 3, is indeed greater than the cardinality of set S, which is 2. And all that Hall's theorem is saying is that if this condition is true for every possible subset that you could choose of set A, then it must be true that a matching exists. So now let's consider a scenario where this condition actually doesn't hold. All right, so let's consider this scenario where, again, individuals are submitting their preferences for movies, but the preferences are a little bit different this time. Let's see if we can find a matching between the individuals and the movies, such that no individual has to watch the same movie. So if we start, we can see that in this scenario, individual B has said they're only willing to watch movie two. So we have to match B with movie two. 
And similarly, individual D down here has said that they're only willing to watch movie three right here. So we have to match individual D with movie three. So then if we look at what remains, we could match individual A with movie one, but then if we look at individual C, they can only be matched with movie two or movie three, which are both already taken. So it turns out that there is not a matching in this scenario. And more formally, we could have used Hall's marriage theorem to figure this out. So as an example, if we call this set A, these vertices, a subset of this set could be these three vertices right here, B, C, and D. So let's say subset S is B, C, and D. What is the cardinality of this set? In other words, how many vertices are in this set? Well, there's a total of three. Now, if we consider the neighborhood of this set, remember that's just all of the vertices that are adjacent to at least one vertex in this set. So if we look at vertex B, it's only adjacent to one other vertex. That's vertex two right here. So let's add two to our list. Then if we consider vertex C, it's adjacent to vertex two and three. So we'll add three to our list. And if we consider vertex D, it's only adjacent to vertex three, which is already in our list. So our neighborhood is just this set right here. Now, the cardinality of the neighborhood of S is just the number of vertices that are in the neighborhood of S, which we can see there's only two vertices. So that would be two. So in this scenario, this condition up here for Hall's theorem does not hold. It's not true that the cardinality of the neighborhood of S is greater than or equal to the cardinality of S. Or in other words, two is not greater than or equal to three. So that means that a matching does not exist, which is what we just verified. Now, in more informal terms, what that means is that if we have these three vertices right here, we can see that altogether they're only matching up with these two potential vertices over here. So we can see that there's no way to assign these three individuals to each watch their own movie when there's only two different movies to choose from. So that is why a matching does not exist between the individuals and the movies in this scenario. So that's all that Hall's marriage theorem is really saying. If you have a set of vertices and you want to match them with another set of vertices, then every subset of the vertices that you want to match, the neighborhood of that set of vertices must be at least as large as the set of vertices or else a matching does not exist.